Hey, and what a great spot we're in here in central Pennsylvania. I'm noticing all these really large, majestic eastern white pine, Pinestrobus. Look at this one here, Brad. Oh, wow, that is a good size one. You know, I understand they refer to this tree as the king's tree. That's right, Brad. This was called the king's tree because the king of England claimed all the best white pine in the early colonies for building ships in the Royal Navy. Yeah, I can see and why these would have been chosen for using in the shipbuilding industry. You know, today, uh, eastern white pine is, is still a valuable timber species. It's easily milled. It's a soft wood, uh, nice straight grain works really well for construction products too. But today though, we are also seeing it used more and more in landscapes. It's a great evergreen, it's a native evergreen. Eastern white pine has a pretty broad range from Georgia up into Maine, but you're gonna find most of the areas along that range are gonna be more higher elevations. It tends not to be a coastal tree it likes a little more cooler of an environment. An eastern white pine can be sensitive to prolonged time of increased heat. Uh, here in a, in a native woodland setting, the, the, the temperature is definitely 10, 15 degrees cooler than what we see in the urban environment. One of the things about white pine is they're, they're very specific to where they're gonna thrive and grow. It's one of the reasons they're used in research to kind of identify changes in our environment. Temperature, moisture changes, those are all signs that will show up in white pine. So it's a good indicator species to be used in research. The other thing I like about this tree is it offers kind of a soft texture that I think kind of balances out landscapes when it's utilized maybe as a screen or potentially a specimen tree. Absolutely. When we see these guys out in the landscape, in a full sun environment, we're looking at a, a much more rounded canopy, uh, occupying much more real estate on a per tree basis. So, so you would probably consider this uh, a fast growing species then? Absolutely, I would. Now here in the shaded environment and, and with this adjacent competition, we're throwing on uh, on average six, seven, eight inches of growth a year. In the landscape with a full sun environment, we may be up closer to one to three feet of growth a year. Brad, what do you find to be the number one stress factor of white pine in your landscapes? Yeah, I'm gonna say just the poorly drained soils uh, that, are, that are high alkaline. So when you're receiving calls from clients where the needles are very stunted and the growth rate is very stunted, we typically will go in and look at the root system a little bit, test for phytophthora root rot, and a lot of times that's where the root of the problem is. So in addition to Phytophthora and the root system, as we move up into the plant a little bit more, sometimes we'll find pine needle scale on, on some stressed out white pines. We also find pine bark adelgid. I don't see any in this, this stand of trees here, but that's an easy one to see because it's white and it's on the undersides of the branches. Uh, any that you're seeing that? Especially in young plant material that's moved into the landscape, we often see the terminal leaders die back mm. from white pine weevil. Uh, in the early stages, that kills out the leader and the adjacent branches try to take over dominance. It oftentimes leads us to that large round canopy that we see in the landscape versus these straight uh, columnar trees that we see in the native setting. Yeah, I think that's one of the issues with open grown eastern white pine, uh, especially in the winter time when we're looking at snow and ice, that canopy tends to spread out a little bit and uh, we get snow loading and ice and you can get those branches breaking off. Uh, the tree lends itself very well to pruning. Uh, you can manage weight and overextended branches very well. One of the treatments we find to be very effective for eastern white pine in the spring is a horticultural oil treatment, which has, has great benefits to controlling mites, some pine needle scale, pine bark adelgid. And oftentimes in the fall, we find predaceous mite releases to be beneficial for managing rust mite. One of the best ways to manage white pine is strong cultural practices. I brought along a soil sample that we would typically see in the urban environment, and I'd like to see what we have here in a native woodland environment. Yeah, that, that's a great example, Ian, of typical soils I see 
on residential properties that we're looking after. Let's see what we have here. Black, very rich soil. Uh, definitely going to be in the area favorable for root development. What a, what a difference, what a contrast there. So what are some of the ways that we can incorporate organic material in the soils like that? Uh, typically the thing that we have most readily available is just simply compost. Mulch layers and increasing mulch rings around plants will also help regulate temperature and moisture loss as well as naturally combating Phytophthora. Uh, if we have that opportunity, we can use an air spade and through the process of root invigoration, incorporate biochar and, and other items like compost. One of my favorite things about the eastern white pine in the landscape is when space allows, it, it is a phenomenal privacy planting uh, and, and very few trees are required to, to plant a hedge and create a sense of privacy. I've seen it work well in the landscape. Uh, I think that's where us doing our routine inspections on the trees to try to notice them symptoms ahead of time so that we can make changes to maybe the soil adjust for some pest pressures that they may have is really the best way to go. Thank you.